Morning Valparaiso First family. We are so excited that you've joined us today and happy Mother's Day. I hope that you're gathered gather together with your family and that you are ready to worship the Lord with us today. Amen. Hearts rejoicing, breaking silence. You are my God alone. Time to stand on your word with passion.
to all our moms. Since we're doing announcements today, we want to wish our mom a happy Mother's Day too. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mom! We're so excited everyone is here with us today. If this is your first time joining us, please connect with us by texting the word CONNECT to 850-665-2751 so we can get to know you better. Also, we would love to hear from everyone who has joined us today. So make a comment in the chat and let everyone know you're here. 
We are still taking the time to pray on Wednesday night. So let's all join together from our homes in prayer from 6 to 6.30 p.m. Each Wednesday on our Facebook page, we'll be asking for prayer requests. Just leave a comment or you can send a direct message to us and we'll make sure we pray for that need. Lastly, thanks to everyone for your generosity. Your giving is helping us serve our community, support our missionaries, and our church. Now is a great time to give, so please go to our webpage, valag.com, and click Give. You can also mail it to the church. Thank you for being so faithful every week as you give. Thanks again for worshiping with us online. Today we have a special speaker, and in just a moment we want to welcome our mom as she encourages us today. You go, mom! Woohoo! Good morning, Valparaiso First Church family. It is so good to have you join us this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all our wonderful moms. We so appreciate a godly mom, a praying mom. We love you moms. And speaking of moms today, uh, I'm joined by Angela, and I'm so excited. I'm really pumped for today because she is going to uh, bring the message. So you're getting a break from me and you're getting a blessing from her. And before she starts today, I just wanna pray for her before she begins. So would you join with me and pray for her today? Father, I thank you today for our church. I thank you today, Lord, that we love you, that we're serving you. And Father, today I thank you for a godly woman in my life, a godly wife. I pray today, let your anointing be upon her, let her words and Father, what flows from her heart be from you. What you've deposited in her, Father, we pray let it flow and be deposited in our lives today. We're excited about what you're doing in our midst. Father, we're excited about you today to serve you and love you. Just anoint her life and her words today. Might she be the voice of God into us. We love you, Lord. All this we pray in your name. Amen. I know if we were all here in the sanctuary, you would be clapping and cheering. So put a clap emoji in the chat for her as she comes and just brings God's word today. Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day to all our beautiful moms out there. So today, my scripture is Psalms 139, 13 through 16. Again, it's Psalms 139, 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. My title of my message today is, You Are the Work of God. You are the work of God. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much, Father, for just giving me this opportunity today. I praise you, Lord, for you are so wonderful. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Father, I pray that you anoint my lips. Anoint my lips today and help me to speak your words. In your heavenly name we pray, amen. So I remember when I was pregnant with my first child, Alyssa, we wanted to be surprised. I had no idea if we were going to have a boy or a girl. So many days, I wondered who she would be like. Who was she going to look like? Would she look like me? Would she look like her dad? What would her voice sound like? Most of all, I prayed for her to always follow after God. I had an emergency C-section with Alyssa. When I first heard her cry, I was like, is that my baby? Is she okay? Is my baby okay? I can hear her crying. Why is she crying? I didn't even realize that babies cry when they are first born. Plus, they had me on a lot of pain medication, so of course that didn't help. When the doctor first gave her to me, she was beautiful, and I just thought how wonderful she was, and I just remember holding her in my arms, 
and just praising God for the blessing that he gave me. So here's a picture of our beautiful Alyssa. Isn't she beautiful with her beautiful brown eyes? She's my blessing. So four years later, when I was pregnant with our second daughter, Miranda, I wondered all the same things and even more. Would she be like her sister? Would they get along and be close friends? So I also prayed and prayed for her to love God always and put him first. When she was born, I did the same thing with her. I held her in my arms, and I thanked the Lord for giving me such a beautiful blessing. And I was so amazed how different my girls were, but also how unique. The first thing I noticed about Miranda was her big, beautiful blue eyes. I never thought or imagined I would have a daughter with such pretty eyes. Check out this picture of Miranda. Look at those beautiful eyes. This girl will never need makeup. Her eyelashes are so long. She is so blessed. She is so lucky. My two girls were created so different, but they are special and unique in their own ways. Most people think Alyssa is my twin. I get that a lot. You look like, you know, well, to Alyssa, you look just like your mom. You guys could be twins. And Miranda, most people think Miranda is a blend of both of us. But I think Miranda looks more like her daddy. Go ahead and let me know in the chat what you think. Do you think Alyssa looks like me or her dad? And what about Miranda? Go ahead and say, Miranda, I think she looks like mom. I think she looks more like dad. Go ahead and let us know. We'd love to know what you think. So after all these years with my girls, I wouldn't want them to be the same. I love everything about them. I love everything that's different about them. Of course, some days, yes, they do drive me a little crazy, but I know I drive them a little crazy as well, especially when I'm a little tired, and I'm sure they can tell you stories, but you don't really have to ask them. We'll just keep that in our family. But there is never a boring moment in our home, I can promise you that. We definitely entertain each other. As my girls got older each year, of course, I thought everything they did was amazing. Don't we moms always think everything they do is amazing? It's amazing how you can look at your child and love every single thing about them. It's other people who focus on their flaws. They focus on what they lack. But a mother, she just loves you. She sees your value regardless of what others think. I believe this is how God looks at us. It's not that he doesn't see our imperfections, but he loves us regardless. He also knows our imperfections, lack of gifts in some areas of our lives. He also has, it has nothing to do with how he feels about us, but like a mom, he doesn't love us for what we do or accomplish, but for who we are. His creation, which is wonderfully made. He knows his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. Even our weaknesses are fearfully and wonderfully made for his purposes. In our lives, our problem starts when we listen to what other thinks about our design rather than the one who designed us in our mother's womb, the one who loves us. And when he looks at us and says, you're exactly as you should be. You are perfect just as you are. Another thing that amazes me about how God thinks of us is he knows our imperfections will not keep us from what he created us to do, but actually guide us to follow his plan. See, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Right now in the chat, go ahead and type that. I am wonderful. Declare that right now. I am wonderful. Amen. You are wonderful. Let me encourage you. Stop being limited by your inability. God's word is telling you that he has created you wonderful. Imagine what would happen if you stop focusing on your inabilities and thinking that they limit you from being as wonderful as someone else. You would see that your inabilities direct you to live in the gifting and abilities God created in you. 
rather than be disappointed in who you are, you would excel where God created you to be used. You would begin to see how wonderful he made you. You will never be fulfilled trying to be like someone else. Discontentment leads to displacement. Let me say that again. Discontentment leads to displacement. You try to become someone you're not and thriving in who you are, you fail trying to be someone else that you're not. And what happens when you get displaced for who you really are and where you're supposed to be, you become frustrated, you get discouraged, you get down on yourself. Oh, you only see what is lacking in you. But you need to see you are wonderful the way God created you to be. You are able to do what others can't. Yes, you are able to do what others can't. David never thought about being king until Samuel anointed him. He was so content in being a shepherd. His heart was in taking care of the sheep, leading them to the still waters, guiding them in the right paths. He was content with who he was and his role in life. He saw it as a great honor to take care of his father's sheep. We may not think about it. We may not have ever thought about this before, but when we're dissatisfied with what God wants to entrust in us, we are not honoring the work he has given us to do. If God is perfect, then how and what he's created for you is perfect for you. Embrace who God has you to be. Honor him where he has placed you now. Let God use you where you're at. Serve him well. Don't think, well, when I have my dream job or when I have the right opportunity or when I'm happy, God can use me. So I'm just going to wait. No, let God use you now right where you are at. David didn't know it when he was a shepherd, but God designed him perfect for his role in history as the king of Israel. See, none of us is designed by mistake. Your design is part of the well thought out plan of God that he has created just fit into his creation. His plan for you fit right into his creation. He created you to fit into his pl plan for creation. Your life is ordained by God. That means your design has been ordered by God. Amen? Your design has been ordered by God. Stop listening to voices that say, you are a mistake, or something about you is a mistake, or you're not good enough. Stop listening to those lies. You need to dwell on one fact, and that's your design is ordered by God, and your life has value. Go ahead and type that in the chat. My life has value. My life has value. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says this. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Let's look at that word, everything. He has made everything. He has made one thing. No, it doesn't say that. He has made some things. No, he has made everything everything beautiful in its time. He, he has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I'm going to read that verse again. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. It is so interesting to me that I can know I am fearfully and wonderfully made, but also a work in progress. Like David, who was a shepherd and eventually a king, God has the ability to use you effectively where you're at now while developing you for what is ahead. Think of it this way. A pencil is wonderfully made for a purpose. It has a wood exterior perfect for holding the lead within for its writing. You even get an eraser to fix any mistakes you make. The pencil is made for the purpose of writing. But it cannot be used until it's sharpened, right? Until someone puts the pencil through a sharpener. 
which tears away the outer wood casing, bringing the lead within to a point. It's been made perfect for its purpose. But its purpose isn't fulfilled until it has been sharpened. I remember when I was teaching, my kids would raise their hand and be like, Mrs. Suvino, Mrs. Suvino, may I sharpen my pencil? And they knew that that pencil wasn't going to let them write until it was sharpened. And of course, I wanted them to sharpen their pencil so they wouldn't have an excuse to not do their work. It is the same with us. We are wonderfully made, exactly as God desired. We may not realize our beauty, but as you give your life to Christ, he sharpens you for use. That's when we begin to see how he created us and what we possess is perfect for our purpose. We don't need to compare ourselves to others. God did not create you for what he created them for. As you serve Jesus, as you give your life to Jesus, as you become like Jesus, as you go through trials with Jesus right by your side, the beauty of how wonderfully made you are will be revealed one time after another. Like it says here, we do not know the beginning from the end. We don't always see how God can use us the way he created us created us from the beginning to the end of our lives. But we can trust his plan. We can trust his word. You are wonderfully made. As he shows me more of who I can serve him to the fullest, as he helps me to live out my purpose, as I look back on my life, I see how God has put me in different places and how he used my life to touch others, and how God put other people in my life to touch me. Let God use you for what he created you for. Love him. Serve him. Let others know that he created them and loves them. Today, when I look at my girls, I am amazed how time flies and how grown up they are. This picture right now that you're looking at is the most recent picture of my girls. Alyssa will be a junior in college this fall. It's just weird saying that. She's going to be a junior at Southeastern University. Her nickname, she's our Lissy Lou. Miranda will be a sophomore in high school, and that's weird too, a sophomore in high school, and she is our Munchie Lou. We just love our girls so much. I'm amazed how God has created each of them so different but with such great purpose. I'm excited at how God has already used them, and I'm excited to see how he will use them in the future as they stay faithful to serve him as they are. You should also be excited with who God created you to be and how he wants to use you today and in the days ahead. He is not done with you. He still has a plan for your life. He knows what's best. Remember that. He knows what's best. So trust him with your life. I want to encourage and challenge you to serve God like you never have before, just as you are. Put him first in everything you do. Pray more. Give more of yourself to him. Love more. There are so many people who need to hear they are loved. Let them know they are loved. Be effective for his purpose where he has placed you. Let God use you to share the truth of Christ with others. You may be the only one that someone listens to. Let me say that again. You may be the only one that someone listens to. Let's thank God for creating us just as we are. I want to pray you can accept who God has created you to be. You can be used now, right now. Don't wait until tomorrow or next week or next year or five years from now. Let him use you where you're at now. And as he is using you, he is shaping you for what is ahead, just like David. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much, Father, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for creating us, Father, just as we are. I pray those that are listening, Father, to this message, 
help them, God, to know that you created them just as they are, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise your holy name, God, for you are so good to us. I pray, God, that if there's anyone listening right now that's not saved, I pray, Lord, that they ask you in their heart. And I pray, God, that they ask you to forgive them of their sins. Oh, Lord, thank you for your salvation. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for creating us. Thank you, Father, for all you do for our lives from the beginning to the end. We praise your holy name for you are wonderful. Thank you for making us fearfully and wonderful. In your heavenly name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I just pray that all of you have a blessed day today. And again, happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful moms.